Hey folks, we're back with another episode of Three Men in Anime, episode 24. We're getting old and, with this. Yeah, we're getting, yeah we are. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah... Uh, this is we're covering this week. We're covering Gav's most recent choice, uh, Konosuba, uh, was a recommendation to him. I yeah, believe. yeah. This was this is the first of the recommendations, and thanks to Clockwork Runt, uh, who posted it up in the comments section of the Fate Stays video. Um, yeah, Konosuba. Konosuba. Oh, I'll fight you guys over this show. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to that, guy, Eric. <laughs> Eric. Eric is your best. Eric is your best friend. Myself and Peter, mm, not so much. Uh, so yes, this explosive series. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a. I do like explosions. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fantasy comedy series, um, largely structured uh, in sort of an episodic format, mostly. Mm. Uh, it does eventually develop an ongoing... It, it technically has an ongoing plot. Technically. Yes. Uh, and it does have... The second... We, co we're, we covered both seasons of that are out so far because they're short seasons. They're ten episodes yeah, each. They're, they're yeah. much shorter. This is this is one of those where there's a... There's a it's, it's like there is an overarching uh, plot, but they're in no rush to solve it. Um... Whether this is because it's, I, I, I say I haven't really looked into this one. Whether it's a, a manga that's just not been fully adapted yet, or if it's just a show that they're not in, you know, they're not really in any rush or, or just don't. And I can be honest, they don't care about the overall arc because, as we'll go into, it's it's not really the premise of the show. It's more just the the setup. Yeah, it is based on a series of light novels, unsurprisingly. An anime based on. Light novels? I, I never would have that heard of it. That never such. happens. Actually, it's based All on anime. Are completely original. Okay, I'm looking it up on you. On, I'm looking at Wikipedia now. Actually, it's originally a, a full-on novel series, not just not just light not light novels. Hmm. Oh, okay. It was a novel series that was adapted into light novels that was adapted into a manga that was adapted into the anime. That's a whole lot of adaptation. Yes. I went through the whole journey. Now I I don't know I don't know the full uh, order I don't know the full ordering I mean. Of you know what? Oh it was. shit! You know what that means? You do know what that means. The next step is live action. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no. <laughs> At any rate, um. So, uh, basic premise. Uh, our hero. Uh, <laughs> you use the term loosely. <laughs> there are no heroes here. Not, <laughs> they're they're no. lovable idiots, but there are no heroes. <laughs> uh, the main character of the show, uh, the our our primary protagonist, as it were, uh, is Kazuma Sato, who is a uh, teenager, uh, game obsessed shut in, <laughs> uh, who uh, decides. If you're American, he'd be a neckbeard. Uh, yeah, he's yeah he. he... He literally mentioned in the very first episode is like joking that he he has to limit his time outside because sunlight burns. Yes. No, the he... only reason he even even leaves his house in this opening episode is because the brand new game that everyone wants is out. Hey, he's got really, a collector's edition. He wants a collector's edition, and so he has to go out. He leaves the house early, um, to go get get into the act get because he lives out sort of out in the out in the boondocks as near as I can tell. Um. Uh, when he sees a, a another a girl about his age crossing the street, who looks like she's about to get hit by something, so he dives out to stop her, shoves her out of the way, and dies. And he wakes up in the afterlife. In the afterlife. Uh, well, the pre-afterlife, I guess. Right. Sort of an après vie, I guess. In the waiting room. <laughs> Purgatory. The waiting room's closer to it. <laughs> um, it's true. We all know purgatory is a bar. Indeed. Um, where he is met by a goddess by the name of Aqua. Um, who makes him an offer. Guess what her element is? Fire. Yes. Don't be ridiculous. It's absolutely fire. It's clearly over-the-top Sundori uh, action. 
<laughs> it's that Actually, too. no, we know what our element is. It's rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, um, Aqua makes him a deal, basically, since he died young and didn't accomplish much with his life. And he did die at Attempting to save somebody else, technically, even if they weren't actually in any danger. Yeah, it turns out when he leapt to push her out of the way of the truck, the truck was actually a tractor. And moving it was really moving. slowly. And then he died of a heart attack because he thought he was going to get hit by a truck. Yeah. Yeah. She proceeds to make fun of him for about five minutes over this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he wet himself. <laughs> he wet himself during the process. The doctors laughed at him instead of trying to save him because he wet himself. His own family laughed at him because he wet himself while he died. And, no and one also, liked you know, him. No one cared. Yep. Aww. So she gives him a couple of options. Uh, one, he can go on to, you know, basically on to heaven, which she says is really fucking boring. Right. Uh, she could have him reborn in his homeland with a slightly better circumstance, or... Since he's a gamer type, there's another world which is in da real danger from being destroyed by being taken over and destroyed by the, the Devil King, and she can have him re she can bring him over there his with all his knowledge, all his modern world knowledge and everything, and one item of his choosing, to become a big hero there and destroy take out the Demon King and save the world. After which he he basically will be granted a wish. Of any wish, she's being a real bitch about this, by the way. Oh, <laughs> she is. She is being off. She is mocking him relentlessly, uh, and just being generally obnoxious. Um, and basically, so she presents him with this giant. He basically says, "Okay, I'm. I admit, I'm kind of interested by the whole like you know, fantasy world saving the sa saving doing the whole be a hero thing. Sure, let me at least look. Uh, let me look at the 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 item options you're giving me. She, she says, "I've got a whole bunch of items you can you can choose from if you want." She, so he's looking through them, and there's all these ridiculously powerful artifacts. He's like, "Wow, these are all hideously overpowered." Like the gamer sense of my brain is going, "These are broken beyond all recognition." Oh my god! <laughs> and he's having trouble deciding well, even, between even them. Then, yeah, even then she says, "You know, it's like, well, here's a set of you know presets, but you can have pretty much anything you can think of." Right. Right. And. Basically, he spends a lot of time sort of waffling between them because he's a diehard gamer and is basically trying to min-max his choice. Yeah, he's trying to min-max it. <laughs> yeah. She's like, just pick one. It doesn't really matter. Just go. And she just keeps needling him and annoying him. Eventually, he gets he, he gets fed up. Um, and he says, okay, I've decided. Right, so what I'm going to bring with me is you. <laughs> and she's like, all right, here we go. Something go opening the gate. Something shoot. Wait, what? <laughs> At which point a, a subordinate goddess of hers shows up and goes, you're doing such a great thing, Aqua, going with him to help defeat the Demon King and save this world. I really respect what you're doing. No, no, this is not the plan. Goodbye! <laughs> and the thing is, the goddess who's saying this is being completely earnest. Yeah, she, she's not being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, and her name's Eris, and she's a complete sweetheart as far as we've seen in the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Kazuma and Aqua end up in this world. Um, Aqua is annoyed. <laughs> um, Kazuma is realizing that, wait, we're, like if this was a game, I'd be starting off with at least starter gear of some sort, like you know, a, a, like a, a crappy dagger and crappy armor. No, I'm wearing the tracks the 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 tracksuit I was wearing on my way to the store. And I've got no money or anything, and the fuck. <laughs> All right. Yeah, for the first for the first few episodes, at the very least, he everything to him is is as the game. You know, this is this is for all intents and purposes a real world. Right. It just happens to be the sort of world that would be the basis for a fantasy RPG. There, but he is totally in not gamer mode. Entirely untrue, because there is an adventurer's guild, and he goes to to figure out what his class is, which it turns out is yeah. pretty average, except for high luck and intelligence and moderately high intelligence. So yeah, you should probably be a merchant. But, no, no, I'm going to be an adventurer. Well, the only class you qualify is generic adventurer. Have fun. <laughs> So yeah, they, they go into, you know, and it turns out that they've got this whole system where you go to the guild, they scan you, that copies down your stats onto the little card, and what class you choose, 
And this card thing can't be forged, so it actually will demonstrate what you are and that you're actually an adventurer, etc. And when you gate, when you fight, and, it acts like an RPG. It's your character sheet in an RPG. Right. So it like yeah. you, when you earn experience points, you can spend them on your spend them on stuff. Like stats can go up, etc. Blah blah blah. And you can learn new abilities. And so they go up to get their their adventurer's licenses, but they have no money, and it costs money. So Aqua's like, okay, well, um, see, the thing is, Aqua has, Aqua has real motivation, at least she should have real motive. she has real motivation to actually beat the Devil King in a lot of ways. Mostly because she can't leave until he's beaten now, because until Cosma beats the Devil King, she's stuck here. She can't go back to heaven. And, um, she's kind of annoyed by this. <laughs> but she's like, okay, well, uh, oh, look! Over there is a is is a priest of the 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 Axis sect, the part the, the the sect of gods that I'm I'm like in charge of. Great, I'll walk I'll go up to him and sort of reveal and reveal himself to a god, and he'll help us out and get our adventurer stuff going. Of course, you know he doesn't believe her at all. Also, he's a priest of Eris, not Aquas. <laughs> but and, he takes pity on her and and lends her some money, and Aquas like. I just got lent money by a priest of a god that I'm superior to. What's happened to my life? <laughs> yeah. So that she got the whole, you know, I'm, I'm being I'm being pitied by my inferior, by my subordinate, and she she has a fucking breakdown. <laughs> yeah. So Aqua you know, has a lot of breakdowns. Yep. Yes, she does. So Cosma basically goes up, and they, they go up, they get their adventure things filled out. As Eric pointed out, Cosma is... Stats are basically average across the board, as Eric said, except for, you know, moderately high intelligence and through-the-roof luck. And he becomes a generic adventurer, which is the lowest of the... the, the weak, considered the weakest and lowest of the, advent, of, the, of the actual adventurer classes. It has one minor yeah, perk yeah. that comes up later. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, have, no, you have no specific path in... You, you, like, like if you if you pick like rogue or you know warrior or the rest of it, you've got your path laid out. The generic adventure is literally whatever, mate. Go learn what you like. Yeah. Um. So, Aqua, her stats are all ridiculously high, with the exception of intelligence, which is pretty damn low, and luck, which is at the at the actual minimum. Yeah. <laughs> She's not very smart, and she is hideously unlucky. Yeah, it's kind of amazing Aqua doesn't just rule everywhere. She's not smart. She's not... She's she's below average intelligence. She's not pathetically stupid. Yeah, she's functional. She's just not... <laughs> she doesn't... She doesn't just... She just doesn't engage her brain. Right. Well, she, she's not... She's not... You know, she's... Yeah, at any rate. But she qualifies yeah, she's, for... She's actively stupid. She is. She's dumb. <laughs> She is dumb, but she is not like, you know, she is not, you know, incapable of thinking. She's just dumb. But she qualifies for basically any class she wants, except for, you know, mages. <laughs> it's like, yeah, with that intelligence, no. And, she's like, and so she chooses to be an archpriest, which is like one of the rarest classes in the entirety of the world. And is very... Yeah, she qualifies for a hero class, basically. Yeah. Out, of the, out, of the, out of the blocks. And so, the two, so, you know, they basically, and so the, uh, they, they've qualified to be adventurers, but they have no gear or anything like that, or somewhere to stay, or money, or anything like that. So they get part-time jobs at the local construction group, and um, that's pretty much what they do for the first episode. There is a montage and everything. <laughs> yep, and they, you know, they basically are able to rent, you know, space in a stable where they, to sleep. World, you know, and so it, it's <laughs> the montage basically is working with the construction guys, going out to dinner, bathing, you know, basically working, you know, and you know, going to the baths, you know, going out drinking, aqua puking rainbows, sleep. <laughs> because puking she's the deity, the of course God. she pukes rainbows. I love the Aqua Pukes Rainbows, it, and it never hilarious. stops. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It's hilarious. Um, and so, yeah, they eventually decide, okay, basically Cosmo eventually is like, wait, this, we are doing this wrong. We're supposed to be adventurers and go out doing stuff. 
Okay, we've got enough money now that I, we can actually get basic gear. I can get crappy armor and a crappy sword, and you can get stuff. We can go out and do something. Let's find a stupidly easy uh, kill task and go fight and go, go do this. So they get a quest. There's, there's their quests on the boards that you can grab and go and complete and and get money for them and experience. And they go out to get a kill test to kill giant frogs. <laughs> The yeah, giant frogs. This is an easy quest. What? The giant frogs are hilarious. They are absolutely just, hilarious. Just they're completely incapable. They're completely incapable of actually dealing with them and get eaten a couple times. Well, specifically, it specifically it's Aqua who gets eaten. Yes, which is hilarious because <laughs> she deserves it. So yes, yeah, so the frog <laughs> bends over, bites, basically, you know, chomps her on the head, lifts its head up upside down, and she slowly starts sliding into its mouth as Cosmo runs up with his sword and starts whacking at it. <laughs> but it, it's I will give it credit the, the, there is there is good comedic timing in this show because Aqua does the whole thing where she just stomps up to it it's like yes, I'm going to handle this this is just a pathetic puny mortal creature this is no power of, no match for my god abilities and she actually uses um, what is like, it like god like fist a, or something god, or fist, god, yep. like god fist di divine strike sort of deal with glowing fist of energy except she's a priest. So when she hits it, it's just like, bonk. The frog looks down, I'm gives it a here. second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your aqua's like, muffled screams and Cosmo yells, God! And charges. <laughs> yep. Cosmo's panicked scream of, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. <laughs> so they run away. They go back to town. Uh, Cosma then has the idea of okay, well we got we got to get more people in the party. Fine, we'll post so and, and you know she's and so you know uh, Aqua's like I'll handle I'll put up a notice and Cosma's like but, hey, fine you do that. You're being enthusiastic about actually doing the adventuring thing as opposed to basically stop you've stopped complaining about not having not like just doing your e doing the easy you know. Easy, e the easy, you know, construction stuff. The easy construction stuff. Right. She was painting mostly, um, <laughs> so yeah, it sure. was easy for her. Right. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, you, you're being enthusiastic about the adventure thing. Fine. They get nobody coming up because it was like, okay, I better go check what she put up there. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> because you know she's basically only only advanced classes need apply, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, we've got it. Yeah, we have one of us is is maybe a lowly adventurer. I'm an archpriest, so you know I can, it'll be amazing and we'll be unstoppable, etc. And nobody. Basically, it's like it's exactly the kind of thing someone posts in like in an old MMO for looking for group, and it's just like you, you yeah. can read the context of it. It's like, no, nah, I'm not grouping with those people. <laughs> I'm not grouping with. You don't care how good they are. They are. They are dicks. <laughs> it's Whoever... not even. It's not even an old MMO thing. It's like. You're looking the looking for group, and it's just like uh, I'm only taking people to higher skilled than me who've already done this five times time through with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is every bit of the the you know condescending, arrogant, obnoxious MMO player uh, <laughs> post looking for group, and Cos yeah. is like, oh god, that'll never work. <laughs> but they are eventually approached by somebody. They're approached by a slight young girl wearing black robes and an eye patch. And the best hat. A, yes, a fantastic hat. Uh, who introduces herself as Megumin. Um, Megumin is the best character. She is an archwizard, which is, you know, the basically, the, the it's like the archpriest, but for wizards. And she specializes in explosion magic. And, By specialized, know, she, we mean that's all she does. Well, she eventually explains that, but basically, as she's talking, Cosmo's here going, "Okay, there's something wrong here," and he eventually worms out of her that it yeah, literally the only spell she knows is explosion, and she can cast it once a day. But it's not. It's not just the fact that she hasn't learned anything else. It's that she refuses, refuses to learn anything else. To learn anything else. Here's the thing: explosion like, magic is the best spell. Therefore, it's the 
Right, it's the only one worth knowing. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, three seconds into talking with Megami, you realize, like, ah, huh, this, this chick's this chick's totally one of those over-enthusiastic nerds. <laughs> Hello? Gav? Gav, we lost you there. Hang on. Oh, now we hear you. See, this, I'm, I'm having a little bit of um, some disconnected, reconnected. There we go. All right, at any rate, um, yeah, Gav, Gav's going to fix it. You back? I'm back. Yes, great. Hooray. Okay. So yeah, Megaman um basically, you know, Cosmo basically eventually worms out over that basically nobody else will take her in their party because, you know, of how limited she is. And he's like, No, this are so it's like, you know, we really aren't the group for you, you know. It's like, you know Yeah, you know, Aqua may be may, Aqua may be a powerful priest, but we don't have anybody who can protect you. We're not we don't have a tank or anything like that. I'm just a lowly adventurer. He's trying to basically talk his way out of out of group out of teaming up with her. Right. And she basically starts begging him. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'll even carry, like, your bags and stuff. Please, just please take me. <laughs> and he's like, Ugh. fine. fine. <laughs> so, you know, they go out to fight, to fight the, t the frogs again. Um, and, you know, <laughs> she's, this is where she, she opens up the explosion spell and then flops over in, in a heap. Just like you know, like a plank. <laughs> it's 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 great. It is. I, I will give it credit that and Megumin makes me laugh every time just because <laughs> she 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 goes to this huge like incand incantation over your dark powers and destructive forces. It's different it's every time. Huge, also, it's different every time, and it's this huge, gorgeous but fucking immense explosion goes off. And while the mushroom cloud is going up, he cuts back to Megumin, and you just hear her go, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and she face plants. And, and, fall, and, and face she falls plans. directly forward and face plants. It's great. Yeah, with the most <laughs> pathetic little eh. <laughs> Every time. So she completely nukes a frog or two, a frog. A frog. A frog. There are three. She, there are three, yes. <laughs> And Aqua has been distracting the other one, and then eventually chomps her. And so Cosmo goes off to help her. At which point, you know, Megaman's like, uh, Cosmo, I can't move, and the, fr the frog's coming for me. And then chomp, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmo's able to kill... So With the frogs distracted, devouring the two, the two women in the party, <laughs> Cosmo's able to actually defeat the two frogs. And they have completed their kill task. T t to Kazuma's credit, this is exactly what he expected would happen. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's whole reason for not wanting to recruit Megamin. <laughs> he's like, oh, God. Why? So, yeah. They come, he goes, they come walking back into town. The girls are covered with the slime from inside the frog's mouth. And Kazuma's like, okay, yeah, see, we're totally pathetic, Megamin. You really don't want to group with us. Thanks so much. We really couldn't have done it without you, but, you know... You really should move on to a better group. And she's like... She's desperate to stay in the group, and she basically makes her pleading case, and then she proceeds to basically complain that he forced her to get covered in slime and starts bl basically blackmails him into taking him onto the team. Yeah. As Do all it the loudly and publicly. As <laughs> all the women in town look at him and really... Yeah, it, it just shows you how devious she is because it's literally the, you know, he's walking around clean and, those, and the two girls are covered in goop. And you just, it's just a little off si off to the side kind of thing where there's two women, you know, just, just villagers, women, women of the town walking past like, oh my God, what happened to those girls? And Megumin hears it. And you see a little twinkle in her eye because as soon as she does, <laughs> she starts protesting about how uh, Kazuma's putting them through such awful things and covering these girls in slime. And of course, these, these two women hear it and before he knows it, there's a fucking crowd of them. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fine, 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 you can group with us, you can group with us, please stop. Yeah. And the thing is, the, the important note is that, you know, so, you know, not only is, you know, it, it, these two girls, Megaman's like 13. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She's a kid. <laughs> 
but she is an absolute. This is the thing. There are no, there are there are night there are good characters in this, but they're all assholes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone's a bit of an asshole, and I love it. <laughs> They're all capable of being an asshole. <laughs> so yeah, they eventually know they get back. They but they've completed the qu- the, qu- the quest, so they have money. They they have money. They're able to get food. You know, they all clean. They clean up. They 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 group. They they have dinner together. Um, and the girls go off to do, to do stuff, and Cosmo's sitting there at a table alone when he's approached by someone else who's seen the the posting for a group, and it's another woman by the, who is a who's a crusader, therefore, you know, a tanky type. Ah, darkness. <laughs> yes, we're introduced I love, now to... I love, I love his reaction to this. Because this, this woman comes over and she's like, I think she's something like 18. She's like the oldest of the pie. Um, she's in full plate armor, sword, stern... She talks, you know, a lot of sense. And, um, and, and drop dead gorgeous. She's drop dead gorgeous. You know, she's and he's like, oh my god, what? The... And he's there, like, wow, what about it? Wait, wait, there's wow, something wrong so, here. We're so lucky. Wait a minute, what the fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> there's yeah. got to be something yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, she's far too competent to be approaching this team. <laughs> and she and she talks about how she saw the others and like what happened to them and how like cruelly obviously cruelly been to him to them and she's she's clearly sort of getting a bit worked up about it and he's like wait 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 oh god she's a complete masochist <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> and he's like okay so um question um so why are you looking to join up with us and he's like oh I thought you could you 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 people would clearly need the help of a, of a good crusader and he's like yeah. You're a good crusader, so um, yeah. Why aren't you with a group already? If you're, you're a great crusader, I mean, how many teams have you been kicked off? And she's like, I. It... <laughs> because nobody would take her on her team. Because while she is strong and incredibly tough, and brave, yeah. and you know, all this stuff, she is also incompetent with her weapon. She cannot hit anything. She can't actually hit anything. <laughs> And also, she's a little weird. When I say a little weird, she's very weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, this so- is, I, will, I will say, just before we, we go any further, I think it's fair to say there are characters that were that grated a little more but in the se- in season one, at the very least, I think darkness was probably the problem that myself and Peter had the most. No, she's my second biggest problem in season one. <laughs> okay, but we'll get. I think to I that. know who number one is. But oh yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> so yeah, eventually she somehow managed. I forget how she convinces D- D- Cosmo to take her on the team. Oh no, she. That's right. She actually con. She cons because at this point, Megumin and Aqua show up. And they immediately go, yes, we'd love to have you on the team. And we'd we'd like, love no. to have a tank. Oh, my God, do we need a tank? And he's like, <laughs> yes. no, 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 she told, no, no. And he basically tries to do the whole, try to play down, like, you, we're, we're really not right for you. Uh, we're, we're just incompetent. We're just, we are terrible at our jobs. You should, you deserve a better party. <laughs> and, like, you know, you just be in constant danger all the time. And then he realizes, crap, I'm playing right into her masochism, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Because she's getting, she's getting noticeably flustered. That yeah. With all, all, every talk of you know evil demons and frog slime and everything else, she's getting more and more into this situation. Yeah, and you know you mentioned that like he's, he, he and Aqua's goal is to take out the de- the Devil King, and and she's this this is when she's completely sold. It's like, yep, I'm in. Especially with these incompetence, because I'll definitely, the, the, well, I, I'd be, it'd be horrible. I'd be captured and be tortured. And, oh, my God, it'd be so, it'd be so terrible. Oh, my God. It's like, oh, oh, my God, it'd be so terrible. Just think of all the vile, unnatural things that they'll have me do and the, 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 the terrible things I'll have to endure and the daily torture and it would never stop Yamin. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, and, like, Cosmo can't say no because Megumin and Aqua are all gung-ho for to be on the team. I mean, he could say no, but he knows it would be a problem. He's outvoted. 
He's A, outvoted, and B, even if he tried to sort of, like, you know, override them, he knows that if he, even if he managed to succeed, it would be nightmarish for him afterwards to deal with the two of them. Right. So he decides, okay, fine, I'll go with the flow. We'll work around this somehow. We're then introduced to Dartus' friend, one of her few friends, basically who took pity on her after she'd been kicked out of her last group. Um, Chris, uh, who's a thief. Uh, and, you know, she basically, you know, they, 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 she, she talks to the group and she's like, it's, she's so happy for Darkness that she's found a group who's willing to take her. Mm. Uh, uh, so happy, in fact, that she's willing to tell, teach Cosma a, a, a skill. Why, why don't you learn steel? It's really easy and it, it's, it's a prerequisite for most of the rogue stuff. Check it out. <laughs> so she teaches. She so she and basically she and steel is basically works exactly how it works in any JRPG ever. You use the steel ability. Something randomly appears in your inventory. Congratulations. <laughs> so yeah, she, and she. But she says, you know, all right. So here's the deal. Here's how you do he it then now. Proceeds to accidentally steal panties. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. He now thinks it's the best thing ever. <laughs> Here's the thing. So yeah, she's like, we okay. Mentioned this show has a bit of the old fan service yes. side to it. The, before that, before that happens, though, she basically just says, because okay. Kazuma's a creep. Yeah, yes, fan service in that Kazuma's a creep and is unabashedly so. Yes, yes. It's However, one of those where they don't do it overtly. Yeah, it's not there, fan service in there, like look at all these hot chicks being in. Provocative poses for no good reason. No, it's just Cosmo's a creep. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I kind of disagree yeah. on that point. Also, but... no, no female is capable of turning around without their boobs trying to escape the top. Well, that's not that... true at all. Both that... Chris and Megamine do not do this. Or and Darkness doesn't do it because her top goes all the way up past her neck. So... <sighs> at any rate, Did I lose um... you guys. Uh, I think I've cut out again. But at any rate, um, so <sighs> the important bit before that awesome. happens. Gav, you back? Hello? Hello? Am I having issues? Oh, God. Hang on a second, folks. Technical issues here. All right, can you guys hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Gav, say something. We're having some minor technical issues here, folks. Discord is being... Yeah, Discord seems to be... Uh... Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, now he's saying something. Yay! Yeah. So, uh... I, it's... What, did, what did I get to? <laughs> I don't remember. It's... We're talking you about guys seem service. to have dropped off in the middle of my speech. <laughs> we all we all cut off in the middle of each other, I think. We were... Because we were all... I, it, for me, it was kind of like we were all talking over each other, and... Ah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. I want to back up to. I, I do want to back up to when Chris is teaching Cosmo because there's an important point before we get to the panty stealing, <laughs> which is she shows the skill and then basically bet makes a bet with him. Mm. That you know, basically, you try to steal something from me, and you know, try to steal my da my, my my dagger from me. It's you know, it's basically steal right. something of value from me. Basically, if you get lucky. And you, you'll get to keep it. If you're wrong, uh, you'll get these rocks. If you if you don't do it right, and uh, if you get the rocks, then you have to pay me pay me a bunch of money. And he's like, "All right." No, she uh, she she shows him by nicking his uh, coin purse. Right, right. She he wants her. To, she yeah. So he wants it back, and he and well, you have you'll have to steal it. Here here's some rocks, and here's your coin purse. Here's the bet. If you nick the rocks, then I get to keep the coin purse. That's what it was, yes. Yeah. Um, but if you're lucky, you'll get the coin purse. And um, he steals her panties instead. He does. He's not trying to. No, he's trying to nick the, the coin purse. He's trying to get his money back. Instead, he gets her panties. She's like, oh my god, nope, you said I got to keep them. <laughs> and eventually, he, he agrees to sell them back to her for, for you know, <laughs> his coin purse and most of her money. Yes. He has very high luck. <laughs> it was exactly the thing to get the most money. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, the fan service thing. Uh, there's a lot... As, as much as, like, the, the... You know, there's not... There's... 
there's actually a fair bit of fan service beyond the usual stuff. There's a lot of upskirt shots. You know, they're fond of that with Aqua. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I've said, as I was saying before, I think all of, I don't know if it got through or not, but I actually did look, look into a bit of research about this show, and one of the threads that I found about it, there is an actual debate within the uh, within the fan community of whether Aqua wears pants or not. Right. Does, does she wear? Because it's that. Does she wear panties? <laughs> it's that blame with her. You can't actually tell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like I said as well, the the the, the whole thing about you know whenever any of, any of the women really tur- well apart from Megumin for obvious reasons um, turn around, you know, there's definite like um, you know boy, 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 forces boy, boy. at work. There's a lot of boy. Yeah. Boy, 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 boy. Yes. It, it, it I, is made, a... I, made, I made a joke later on and said, you know, if, if for any reason this is the afterlife and I end up here, I know exactly the job I'm taking. Fucking chiropractor. <laughs> I'll make a fortune. It is kind of the part of the joke, though. It's like, yes, all those women's breasts go boy, 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 because of course they do. It's a game world. <laughs> yeah. No, and well, that's, yeah, there is that. It, that that's, it's, I'm, you're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So Cosmo starts learning a bunch of useful thief skills. Um, because he'll, he'll be damned if, there, if, there's, if there's nobody in the party who's actually useful. Uh, a, the thief skills are cheap and inexpensive, and, you know, he can learn them quickly. And B, at least someone will be able to do something. So right. he basically learns how to, like, sneak around and hide and steal shit, and pick up, he picks up other skills as he goes. Um, yeah, he picks up a, a little bit of, of elementalism so he can create water because no one ever brings water. <laughs> Despite that, they've got a water priest with them. <laughs> you know, he's able to use his water, his less powerful version of the same water spell much more effectively than Aqua does because he has a brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, he doesn't flood out the entire area. Yeah, so it's more that because things because things like you know instead of learning useful skills, the one that Aqua picks is fucking nature's bounty. <laughs> right, she, she, nature's bounty, nature's beauty. Yes, <laughs> nature's beauty. Sorry, she learns Which a bunch of par- rainbows and little fountains. <laughs> and yeah, you know, she she learns a bunch of party trick stuff because that's exactly the sort of person she is. Uh, she does know a bunch of useful, very useful combat spells in certain situations. She knows how to heal very well. She's a, she's a powerful healer. She can resurrect people. She has a host of anti-undead spells because she hates undead. Yep. Because, well, she's a god. Yeah. And a bunch of anti-demon stuff, same thing. Right. But beyond yeah. that, she really And she's a water goddess. So she knows a bunch so of water she... spells. Yeah. And she can purify water and poison pretty easily. Right. Whether she's trying to or not. <laughs> yeah. That also becomes a running gag. She can't actually make tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she purifies tea and turns it back into hot water. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, the rest of the se- first season is mostly episodic, you know, adventure of the week stuff. Yep. Yeah. There is, I mean, I know every every single time we do a show like this, we always say we're not going to go into this episode by episode because, the, you know, and we usually end up doing that anyway. This one, there is literally no point. So, oh, yeah. It's because you end up losing a lot of the gags if we just explain them all to you. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a comedy yeah. show. And if we go over everything, it's, we're, it's, we're, yeah, and a lot, so a lot of the good gags are visual. Yes. So it's like, expl- yes. it's like explaining a visual gag is kind of stupid. Except I must reiterate, Aqua puking rainbows is hilarious. So important. It never thing- stops being hilarious. Right. The, 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 the couple of important things that happen. Uh, Megumin eventually convinces Cosma to go out with her to practice using her explosive magic, because she wants she she needs to keep, she wants to keep using it to practice with it, get better with it, and they're not. She they, basically everyone in town says, "Stop casting explosion near town," <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Okay." So Cosma Fine. escorts her out to the to out in the middle of nowhere where she can ab- use it on this abandoned castle. Which turns out is not actually very... Um, abandoned. Abandoned, yeah. Uh, because it turns out that one of the Demon King's lieutenants has moved in there, and eventually he gets very... He's a dual hand, and he gets very annoyed with, uh, with the fact that this is happening. And he shows up to town, basically says, Okay, who the fuck is doing this? <laughs> and, you know, 
Megaman eventually steps forward and like he basically gets there's a, a, there's a lot of someone keeps on casting explosion magic at my castle. Who the hell casts explosion? Everyone looks at Megaman. <laughs> Why would anyone do that? Oh, right, her. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, don't they? Don't they? Don't doesn't Mega Man like take a step back and they focus on the other mage that happens to be in town yes. at the same time? <laughs> she's all like, wait, what the what the fuck are you gonna do for? Explosion magic. <laughs> no, she knows explosion magic. There's another mage who does know explosion magic. Yeah. Um. Whiz. Oh, you're Wiz right. No, no, no. You're right. It wasn't. Wiz you're right. Show up no, yet. they look at the other mage. She's like, I don't even yeah. know the stuff. Right. You're right. <laughs> At any rate, so, yeah, the du- Dual Hand's basically getting ready to, to do stuff. Darkness basically interposed herself between Mega Man and him. Because Mega Man's willing to, it's basically decides, fine, I'll take, I'll take the blame. Because, uh, uh, yeah, she actually has He's something resembling fault. a conscience. Also, you know, she can say, yes, I'm awesome. Uh, Darkness steps in the way and basically, you know, proceeds right, to do her. The, the Dual Hand's going to curse her to die in 24 hours. And, and so Darkness jumps to the way because, God damn it, I'm getting hit with that fucking curse. Screw you. <laughs> right. Because it's Darkness. Right. Well, there's also... It's, it's, it's not just her masochism. It's also she genuinely wants to protect her teammate. Yeah, she, she... They are actually friends. They're dicks to each other, but they are actually friends. I, I, Darkness <laughs> is not generally a dick to anybody. She no, is, Darkness she, is... Yeah, Darkness she is, is a sweetheart. She's genuinely the nicest person in the group. Like... Noticeably so. She's at, at any rate. So she takes things. She's cursed. She's gonna die next time unless Megaman comes to his castle and, and like and you know basically confronts him. So he buggers off, and then Aqua Pers- and like Mega- and Megaman and Cosmo basically go through this whole friendship thing to go save. They're gonna go save Darkness together. It's gonna be you know it'll be hard. It'll be dangerous, but we've got to do it for our teammate. And then Aqua l- removes the curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's fairly easy. It's not even one of the big spells. She's like, okay, remove curse. Yeah, yeah, done. Because it's... Aqua cannot help but try to seal everybody else's thunder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because Aqua's a terrible person. Aqua is a terrible person. <laughs> now, I, again, it is, it is strictly speaking the right thing to do because she can do it. She can save darkness and no one will be in danger. But she could have said something before they started getting all worked up about doing this great deed to help their friend, etc. She could say, oh, I can fix that, actually. We don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah. The only reason she even helps in the fight, do you know, other than what she wants to do, because she wants nothing to do with Dullahan because he's undead. Right. She's like, no, fuck that, fight, fuck that guy. Um, so he summons a bunch of undead, and they proceed to chase Aqua all over the place because she's a god and therefore can... Absolve them of their sins. <laughs> much, yeah, yeah. The uh, so at any rate, stuff happens. Eventually, Dullahan shows up again because he's like, "Where the fuck are you, people? You left your friend to die, and de- why aren't you dead?" <laughs> <laughs> this is when he, he summons his undead army and chases the Aqua around. Right. Eventually, right. like they wipe the army. He's like, "Okay, fine. I will fight you guys, and I will actually take a personal hand." And eventually, the town are like, "You know what?" You guys have inspired us to be heroic about this, and we'll charge him, and, like, we'll charge in, and, like, you know, and Cosmo's like, no, don't do that, you'll get killed! Don't be stupid! Oh my god, they're getting killed. <laughs> there is a couple, there are a couple of, of um, funny little moments with it, because, obviously, being an undead, you know, even the, even though they managed to put wounds on him, he's like, yeah, yeah well done. Means absolutely nothing. Blah, blah, right. blah. I am great. I am un- untouchable. And you just hear from the background, Sacred Turn Dead! <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, like, Oh my god! Ow, 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 ow. Fuck, 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 <laughs> They eventually take out the Dullahan basically by failing forwards. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of failing forwards and coming up with cu- cutting plans to accidentally fuck them up in a way that's better than what they planned. <laughs> yeah. You know, it comes down to Cosmo basically initially is like, Okay, I'm going to seal his sword, it'll be great. Okay, I'm not high enough level to seal his sword. Fuck. What the hell am I going to do? All right, I know what it, I figured his weakness. His weakness is water, but we can't hit him with it because he's, you know, not incompetent. And Aqua kind of is. Because he's a goddamn dodgy motherfucker. He's a dodgy <laughs> motherfucker. I'm not powerful enough to hit him reliably, and Aqua's a complete airhead. Fuck. What are we going to do? <laughs> Aqua's too busy doing uh, nature's beauty. <laughs> so eventually... He, he actually... It, well, I say Kazuma actually takes offense at her, and he starts having a go at her, saying, "What sort of water goddess are you?" And all you can do is these 
pissing little fountains that do nothing just to impress drunks in a bar. You're in useless. It just goes off on one at her. Which gets her to actually participate because, you know, she's offended. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the problem is, may not she's, have she's, been Cosmo's plan, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is, she. this is an offended goddess. Yeah. You know what happens when you when you dare gods to, to play with water? Ask Noah. <laughs> Ask Ajax. <laughs> Do not taunt Poseidon, you moron! <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'll just send my army to stab the ocean. It'll be fine. At Let's any rate, yeah. <laughs> so the big thing that actually sort of sets up uh, the Dullahan for the for the kill is Cosmo steal goes realizes what he because basically one of the things he's doing is he's able to see the whole battlefield by tossing his head up in the air, and Cosmo's like, "Wait a minute, steal." <laughs> That's my head now. <laughs> <laughs> and they proceed to play soccer with it, and then he gets hit with the water and wiped out. Weakened, yeah. and then he gets hit with the turn undead, and plat, dead. So they defeated the dual hand. Hooray! They play this uber amazing quest, and they get paid a ton of money! Except they have to pay all of it back, and uh, are a bit in debt, because they the the flood that... Kind of wiped owned, out a good portion of the town. Yeah, she kind of <laughs> broke the town. Um, oops. Yeah, floods will do that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, the season... Basically, there's a running thing about this... Another thing running sort of joke in there is that they talk about this thing called the Destroyer, which is this mo mobile fortress monster thing that is really strangely popular with kids, and, like, Aqua does shadow puppets of it, etc. And then if they find out that, they, shadow, that there's a, they mention there's a quest to scout out where it's going, etc., what towns it might be going near, that nobody seems to be taking. Um, and then they find out that in, like, the last couple episodes that it's coming to hit the town they're in. Right. Yeah. To which Kazuma just starts bitching about, wait, this is a starter city, why is this coming here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's obviously never played World of Warcraft when they were kiting fucking... Uh, yeah, so... Uh, was it? Yes. I forget which one it was now. The Burning Blood Plague or something? <laughs> the Fell Reaver or something like that? Yeah, it was, it was one well, of the big bosses from the first... The, right. You could kite it all the way to Ogrima. Oh, okay. Well, anyways. Not that important. Yeah. Let's just say that basically they are able to defeat the Destroyer. Um, part of it is... Uh, one, uh, one other important character we do meet um, that we forgot to mention is Wiz. Yes. Wiz is this is a very powerful spellcaster. She's a, wiz she's a very powerful wizard. Asterisk. She's a lich. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the bustiest lich you will ever see. Uh, Holy crap, like, Jesus Christ, those tits. They yeah. would be obnoxious <laughs> if they're not covered the entire time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a couple, there are a couple of characters. Is it Luna, the um, the desk clerk in the guild hall? Yeah, yes. yeah. That wears, uh, wears kind of like a ridiculous top. Thank g God Wiz does not wear her outfit. Yeah, no yes. shit. I, I will say this, I actually like Luna as a character. Luna's yeah. a good character, it's just, yeah. Yeah, but at any rate, so Wiz, it turns out Wiz is one of the was was one of the devil King, the devil king's uh, subordinates. She's in charge of I think pow, was in charge of powering the the the. She's in charge yeah, of something. She, something she, of, she oh, created she, and maintained and maintained the the devil king's giant barrier. Right, she created the barrier, um, and uh, the party apparently in, in, in an adventure that happened not on screen. Uh, the party encountered Wiz. Uh, at a graveyard doing stuff. Uh, she was, I th if I remember correctly, she was doing stuff to help the like the spirits pass on, because right. this is actually yeah. really really nice. Yes. Um, this Aqua is another sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, complete sweetheart. And we Aqua kind of hates her, mostly because un she's undead and Aqua's you know again a goddess. <laughs> right. Yeah. This isn't this isn't anything personal. This is just what she is. Yeah. Also, there's something kind about of an abomination to, against you know life. Also, there's, there's a, a there's mockery a... of that thing that I do. Yeah. <laughs> also, you know, Wiz is you know a is a fairly is a you know a, a a bright, sweet, nice person, and this will this inherently rubs Aqua the wrong way. Yes, because Aqua is uh, <laughs> not. not. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, everyone, everyone, everyone should be revering Aqua just because she's Aqua, not this person that's just nice and people get on with. Yeah, Aqua's a goddess. People should revere her. <laughs> why? Aqua, why, do people, why do people like this bitch? Whisk? We all, yeah, yeah. At any rate, so. Um, Wiz is sort of central. Wiz, Wiz, the, the big thing that Wiz does is, so yeah, Wiz, the first thing that happens, Wiz actually teaches Cosma um, her light, her energy drain build, uh, ability. Because right. Cosma can learn any ability. Yeah, as long as he sees it being used, he can eventually learn it. He's an adventurer, there are no limitations. Normally it'd be impossible to learn this because that the, the, the energy drain is an undead only ability, is an ability that only undead, that no normal class has, just the undead enemies. But he's got a friendly well, undead. A friendly undead, so she can teach him. Yep. <laughs> um, and so it becomes very crucial. He basically uses this ability a fair bit to basically, you know, drain power out of one person and, and feed it to another caster. This allows this allows Megumin to cast her explosion a second time. Um, Which is the best thing ever. She is so happy. Yes. And is needed <laughs> to take. This is needed to take oh out the destroyer. God. Uh, he help, used it to help uh, Wiz teleport the, the... They find the, the power core for the Destroyer, and they basically teleport it away to somewhere random. And Tom's like, okay, I'm going to trust the fact that I'm really lucky, and it'll go somewhere that will not destroy our, our town. And it doesn't. It. It's great. We found out later that it's his luck is a little bit ironic sometimes. <laughs> a little. It's a little <laughs> bit ironic. Um, but yeah, they're able to defeat the fortress. Hooray! It uh, turns out the power core is teleported to a lord's castle, and Cosmo's under arrest for, you know, sedition. For sedition and, and traitorous acts. Because <laughs> clearly he did it on purpose. <laughs> and so that's the end of season one, is him being arrested. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and so season two begins with basically his trial. Um, first off, his interrogation. Yeah. Where they've got a truth detector that is like a magical, infallible truth detector, and basically she keeps asking questions. The interrogator keeps asking him questions. He gives an answer that's not true because it's embarrassing, like about like you know things. And he basically, yeah. <laughs> I like, wanted to help people and defeat the Devil King. That's why I became an adventurer. Bing, because it sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. And then she. And she what did you do beforehand? I was a student. Bing, I was a complete shut in. I never left my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. And she, he eventually says, "Look, just ask me the question you want to ask me, the actual, the important question." All right, have, are you are you an agent of the Devil King? No. Silence. Oh. Huh. Well, I mean, it's not, so you. I mean, so you clearly don't know any but any any sort of his any of his agents. No. Ding. No, no, no. First. It are, are you an agent of the Dola King? No. Silence. And then he goes off on her and just totally overplays his hand. Right. A, and right. being like a, a petty little bitch. Because like, so look, you look, don't look. know any... I, I'm sorry. I never should have thought you didn't know... it. You clearly have no associates with the Devil King. Uh, the Devil King's generals. That's right. Bing. Fuck. <laughs> 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 so it's very much caused by getting... His comeuppance for being a little bitch. Yeah, for basically, <laughs> for, oh, for, he was he was chewing her out for being an incompetent interrogator, which was right. not, he was not wrong, but he was being a dick about it. He was being a giant dick about yeah. it. Yeah. So we go to his trial. Um, it looks like it's going badly. Cosmo eventually sees, sees the truth detector, and he basically gets the, them to basically basically he does the whole thing. It's, I've never was I never was working for the Devil King. I was working to protect the town, all this stuff, and basically the thing's silent. They're like the judge's like, well, all right then, he's clearly not an agent of the Devil King. And everyone's like, okay, great. Except that the Lord whose castle's blown up isn't letting him off with that because you know he's corrupt. Right. He's actually a corrupt asshole. Uh, <laughs> and so, at this point, Darkness basically reveals that that she's also a noble and that she's willing to basically vouch for Dark vouch for Cosma. And basically, she agrees to basically do basically whatever the Lord asks of her in exchange for Cosma basically being in, allow them to actually fully investigate Cosma as opposed to executing them here, here and now. La Latina, shut up! <laughs> um, D Darkness's real name is Dustinus something something something. It's, it's, it's La, Latina. La Latina. La Latina is her first name. Dustinus yes. is her La family. La Latina, Dustinus Ford. That's it. Yeah. 
and, and she hates her real name because it it's honestly kind of ridiculous. <laughs> but the, the problem the, the problem with it is though well not the problem with it but the thing about it is is that the Dustiners family are actually a very powerful noble family. Yes. Right. So this lord shuts the fuck up. Yeah, he's like fuck. Wait, she's offering to do whatever I want. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Yeah, she didn't really need to go that far, but it's darkness. Yeah, but it's darkness. I'll do and whatever like, terrible, unnatural, nasty things you would have me do. <laughs> Which it turns out is basically, yeah, I want you to agree to at least have a meeting to, about the possibility of marrying my son. But we don't know that for like three episodes. No, no, of course not. <laughs> she just sort of fucks off to go. We just keep oh. getting, we just keep getting little flashes of uh, like screaming. No, don't do this. No, stop what you're doing. With I'm silhouette with, uh, and, it's always yeah. silhouette. and you know, and and, you, and like the the rest of the party's imagination about it. Um. All of whom feel terrible about it. Even Aqua. <laughs> Even Aqua feels bad about this. Uh. Yeah. This. You know. And. There's a wonderful episode that's basically almost entirely focusing on Cosma and Megumin. Megumin, yes, which is hilarious. Yes. It's hilarious and sweet and funny. <laughs> Arguably it's great. the best episode. It's I would have to agree with that yeah. because it is the two best characters. But at any rate, they eventually, you know, they get, so there's this ongoing plot for the first chunk of it of basically, you know, them doing doing their adventurer stuff while the Inquisitor is observing them, trying to figure out, okay, are they evil or not? Right. Um, eventually, Darkness rejoins them. They go to clear out this cave. Uh, Aqua had previously fucked up and caused problems. There, another one of the Devil King's lieutenants is there. Eventually, the you know, due to Cosma, basically, Cosma's that plans... was also a pretty good episode. Cosma and Aqua in the the dungeon. It was, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So basically, Cosma basically makes a ba basically Cosma and Darkness come up with basically, you know, come with a. He basically has Megumin cast Explosion on Darkness to kill off the, de the, de the demon that's possessing her. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, at any rate, it turns out Darkness survived because she's that fucking tough. Uh, right. Yeah. Her armor was wrecked, but, you know, she took a full force you know, explosion, and she's like, Ow! I'm really badly hurt, but I'm alive. That was awesome. Yes, at which point, you know, Aqua heals her because it's Aqua. Uh, right. Um, and then we eventually get to, the, so at which point they're cleared of all wrongdoing and earn a bucket load of money. Right. And so they're, they, because they were in massive debt at the start of the season, they're back out of debt now. Um, and then the devil, that they devil actually King's, have a fair chunk left over. Yeah, a <laughs> lot of money left over. Uh, and then the Devil King's lieutenant dude ends up working with Wiz at her shop in town. Uh, because, you know, he actually was planning on quitting the army, and he wanted to quit the army anyways, he just needed a way to get out of it. And it turns out getting blown up is, uh, is a good way to do that. Because he did die! Ooh. He lost one of his extra lives. That's why there's a two no, on his mask he has mask a little, now. like, two on his mask. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. At which point, no, he basically, he and Cosmo try to come up with a, he comes basically proposes to Cosmo that, like, dude, He's basically able to, like, see, like, he sees all, basically. So he knows Cosmo's not from this world. It's from a different world, etc. And he basically says, dude, I've got a brilliant deal for you. You use your knowledge of stuff from your home, 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 home world to make products to give, that I will sell and will make a fuck ton of money. And Cosmo's like, fuck yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so they... Eventually, they just, you know, Megumin basically, like, and Darkness are both like, dude, why aren't we adventuring more? Cosmo's like, I'm about to be, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm about to make, like, a hundred million, hundreds of millions of, of you, know, you know, hundreds of millions of, of heiress, or whatever the, the money the money is called, I forget. Right. Uh, I don't need, like, I can live in the lap of luxury and never do anything. I can, uh, I've even got a plan for dealing with the Devil King, because he's like, like, uh, Aqua's like, but we gotta beat the Devil King. He's like, I've got a plan for that. We'll be, we're so freaking wealthy, we'll be able to hire the best adventurers around, and we'll send them in as an army, which we'll command in there and take out the Devil King. So it'll be my army taking out the Devil King, and that will count. And Aqua's like, that's brilliant! <laughs> I do, I do like the... And Megami, the find, Megami and Darkness both find this abominable because they want to go out and blow shit up. Right. 
I, I do like the irony, though, that after all this time and all these adventures and everything else, he's basically become a merchant. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so... <laughs> You know, and eventually he basically goes to make this like, look. Look, I'm I'm kind of kidding, honestly. <laughs> I'm I'm still like you know realize that like I because he's died he he died he died recently he gotten resurrected. I he, broke he died my twice. Th- he I died twice actually. Yeah. <laughs> like look, I literally died from breaking my neck. I'm still not fully healed. I need to rest up and have it, have it fixed. As as to heal, and she's like. Oh, I've got a great effort out way to heal. It's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I just need to be lazy for a couple of weeks, lie back, just relax. It'll heal itself. It'll be fine. No, no, no. There's this great hot, this great uh, hot spring that we can go to that'll heal it up. And he's like, hot spring? <laughs> Did you yeah, say all okay. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm strangely intrigued by this. And she mentioned the town mm-hmm. name, which I can't remember it off the top of my head. And Ak was like, I'm in. And they're like, that was easy to convince her. She's was happy being a lazy slug also. So they go off to this town. Um, and shenanigans ensue on the, ensue during the trip. Uh, they get to the town, and it turns out that the town is, in, is, is you know, entirely populated and run by members of the Aqua cult. Because Aqua's, you know, Aqua's devotees are referred to as a cult. And we find out why yeah. they're called a cult. Because they're a cult! Yeah. <laughs> Wow, they are just... This isn't a they, church. They, they, they take they evangelizing might, to a new level. They might operate out of a church. They are not a church. It, it, it no. is, like, be, it is beyond levels of Scientology, like, levels of cult, like, you know, recruiting and shit. It's... Harry Kirchner's got nothing on them. Yeah. <laughs> like, they are the most aggressive... Relentless. And yes. The, but like the food's really good, the hot springs are great. They make great soap. Yeah. But every opportunity they get, they're trying to force these recruitment papers on people. Hell, there's one little bit where a little girl comes up and hears about this great adventure and tries to. No, 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 no that's a great joke. Don't don't describe it anymore. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no. Honestly, all the recruitment attempts are hilarious and should be watched. Yes. Yes. If you're watching um, the show. Except for poor, um, poor darkness, poor darkness, because she's actually a member of the cult of Eris, whom they hate. Because dark, because Aqua is not fond of Eris. Right. Her more popular subordinate. Eris pads her breasts. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because Aqua's a childish, jealous. Yes. Bitch. Bitch. Basically. Yeah. (laughs) So. Um, Aqua's enjoying things for a while, little while, but you know she eventually gets very annoyed because she gets kicked out of the hot springs because she accidentally purified them, and it's just normal hot water. Um, and you know she talks to the pre- the, the the guy who runs the hot the the the, the 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 baths, and he basically mentions that the water quality has been going down. She's like, "That's odd." Wait, I know it must be the de- the demon the Devil King's army trying to destroy the foundation of my cult. So that they can't have the money to to oppose him, and she basically goes out uh-huh. trying to tries to like convince her followers, you know, the the the, 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 the you know the followers to do this, and she's and they're like, wait a minute, you're the woman who got kicked out of there. You're just out of the bath. You're just doing this to to, to, to you know deflect things away from you. And she's like, no, 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 no. But, <laughs> but it's clearly that's part of the reason <laughs> she's doing this. Um, uh, and like. <laughs> She's like, no, oh, she, she clearly is trying to, to, to save her cult members and has nothing to do with the fact that she can't actually enjoy the hot baths. <laughs> she, it's totally because she can't enjoy the hot baths. Uh, well, it's also because she wants to protect her cult members, but the real reason she can't enjoy it, therefore no one can. Because Aqua's a petty bitch. <laughs> At that point, it's not clear whether, it's, whether she's wants to protect her, her, her followers. It becomes more clear later. Yes. Um... And so she basically, okay, fine. I'll reveal that I'm Aqua. See, aren't I awesome? They're like, heretic! You're a lying witch! And she's like, but what I... But no! <laughs> and basically, they want to burn her at the stake. Because well, they no, are... The, 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 initial, the initial suggestion is throw her in a lake. And I'm like, well, she's a water deity. That should be fine. Let them throw you in a lake. Prove their point. <laughs> but we mess up her hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> At any rate, so the, the our heroes book it away, and like Aqua's like insisting they check out the springs. He's like, fine, we'll check out the springs. And eventually they work their way in through shenanigans that are hilarious and don't want to spoil them. And it turns out that, in fact, the Devil King's, one of the Devil King's lieutenants is, in fact, trying to poison the hot springs. Yes, that guy we see, like, popping up, uh, um, was just as furious about everything as the rest of the party. <laughs> turns out, no, he's actually a, a, a poison slime uh, and one of the De Demon King's, Devil King's generals. And he's actively poisoning the spring to ruin the hot, the, this, the hot springs here. It's like, wait, Aqua was, was actually either. right. Aqua was actually right. Yes. Which there, is, is... there is one joke that I don't mind sharing because it's such a small one, though. And it's also one that, as, you know, gamers and, you know, MMO RPG players and tabletop gamers and all the rest of it, we were all looking at this and, like, thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? Because Chasm is like, oh, he's a slime. Oh, it's just, it's just slime. That's easy. They're just, they're just weak creatures. All three of us were like, what the fuck are you talking about? To Darkness be fair, and Megamin were like, what the fuck what are you, the talking, fuck about? you talking about? To be fair, there's a, there's, there are several series of JRPGs where that is in fact the case. Slimes are yes. the weak enemy. The problem no, is... They want to go out to grind the first few levels without dying. Right. The Dungeons and Dragons player here goes, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes. Yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> yes, they're the stupidest enemies in existence. Because they're not sentient. But they're awful! <laughs> <laughs> and basically, he's like, like, Aqua points out, like, dude, if he actually kits you, he'll be disintegrated. I can't resurrect you if you've been dis dissolved. That you need to, There needs to be something resembling a body left. And he's like, oh, right, we're running away then. <laughs> and, like, he starts running away and, like, dragging them with him. And she, she, they're all like, but I... It, it, we have to stop this place. Like, Aqua's like, no, we have to stop this. And she goes back. And I, and Cosmo's like, fuck. Right, okay. Yep, we'll go help. So they go back. By the way, Wiz has been traveling with them for various reasons. Right. Um, yeah. So he goes back, and he's like, and they well, basically... Well, well, Wiz needs a vacation, because, um... Varys, is that the name of the, Yes, um, it is Varys. Yes. Varys kind of blew her up for making a really bad business deal. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kazuma basically, they, 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 try to, they try to come up with a confrontation thing, and, and the Hans, the, the, the slime dude, is basically, you know, looks like he's going to be unstoppable. Um, and so, you know, Aqua's sitting there desperately trying to purify the spring. Um, and the her, her basically they the 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 decision point partial came because like they're going up, and they see the cult coming towards them. And they're like, "Fuck, what are we gonna do?" And at which point Aqua decided Aqua was going had already gone back. So eventually the cult shows up behind them, and they're like, "Wait, what? <laughs> Something's actually poisoning the springs?" And the priest lady's actually trying to purify it. What the fuck? Oh, we were wrong. Shit. We will mm. confront him. But the important, so things are going on, and so, like, he's, you know, does, does, is like, you know, he's basically sort of talking about things. And so, oh, I forget who was asked him, I think it's Wiz asked him, what happened to the caretaker of the, the springs? And he's like, oh, I ate him. Yeah. It's my nature. At which point, right. Wiz goes, you what? Because, like, he basically, like, when the, because he's, she's the reason that he's, like, revealed as not human. Because she recognizes him, she, they were fellow, they right. worked together, and she thought they were, she thought that they were friends. And she never said anything about it being a devil king. She just said, I, I recognize you. Oh, Hans, great to see you. Et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, don't, I don't know you. Shut up. I don't know you. <laughs> Take the hint. It's the point where she's like, he's like, we, you, know, I, you, you know, part of the deal was if you, we were going to let you leave if you didn't interfere. She's like, I'm interfering? I was just saying hi. What? We're, we're, we're all drugs. <laughs> as long as we, you, you're, you're allowed to leave. The deal was you're allowed to leave as long as you don't interfere with, interfere, directly interfere with our plans. And she's like, yeah, that's... And so he basically announced that he killed her. She's like, you realize... He's, she basically gets... gets like, says, you're not supposed to interfere. She's like, the precondition on me not interfering is that you people did not harm pe people who were completely you know, no normal, innocent villagers and such. Yeah. Adventures are one... That, it's it's, it's yeah. more badass than that. Because, like... He literally says, uh, "She's like, she, well, she's like, you know, where's where's the, the old priest? Oh, I ate him. What? And then she yeah, blasts him with my, this giant ice. It's wall. my nature. And she's just like, 
fuck you. It was like Crystal Wall just traps his arm. And it looks like, well, she's going to handle this all by her fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, <laughs> she's a fucking badass. Yeah, but Wiz is, yeah, Wiz is an incredibly powerful lich. <laughs> yeah. And like, she's like, and she says, you know, flat out, like, the deal was, you, I, I, I won't interfere, and the, like, and you guys don't harm, like, you know, basic villagers and shit. You, the generals. Like, adventurers, that's one thing. They, 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 they know they're putting their lives on the line. They go out and they fight, they come and fight the monsters and all that stuff. They, sh- they expect that there's a possibility they could die from this sort of shit. You guys aren't supposed to go directly into the towns and hurt the people there directly. And you broke that, therefore, I am free to do what the fuck I want. <laughs> and fuck you. <laughs> um, and it turns into, the, a, you know, a big epic fight. And Kazu basically, like, she, she basically realized that once Hans goes full power, she's like, fuck, I can't freeze him solid and kill him right now. He's too big. I need him to be, like, half the size. And Kazu's like, Okay, um, and like Mega Man can't blow him up because it'll pollute the mountain. She can't right, use explosion because it'll pollute the mountain. There'll be fuck. chunks of horrible everywhere. It'll be, it's like okay, what the fuck can I do? Wait, the caretaker's skeleton still there. He's not been completely dis- d- dissolved. As long as there's something, I've got it. <laughs> All right, Mega Man, when I tell you to, nuke the fuck out of him. Whiz. She's like, okay, I'm down. What it, whatever the plan is, I could nuke something. I am down. Whiz. Once he's once he's been nuked, he should be about half size, and you can you can freeze and then take him out. Darkness. You want me to protect the villagers at, 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 at the the cultists, you know, etc. She's like, yeah. She's like, totally fit down with that. Aqua, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, purify the spring and uh, get ready to resurrect me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what, what? what? Purify, purify, purify! <laughs> God, why does it hurt so much? So, so he leads Hans on, on, on a merry chase by, by taunting him with, with soap, which he hates. Yep. Um, and, and gets him to chase him into a quarry, where he is promptly devoured. Right before he screams, nuke him now! At which point, Megamine does what Megamine does. <laughs> And another 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 great little vi- well audi- almost audio gag as well that they do is it's like it's it's not just that simple where they'll do um, like the the clip and then they'll you know the the the, the command there and then they'll have like oh but he's going to be dissolved in the same no it's more like a case of Megamin new kid <laughs> <laughs> look what she got enough <laughs> did it anyway. Yeah. And then you know, so he's badly damaged by it. Then he's frozen, and then there's a, it's like, and she's like, "Yay, we won!" And then like the thing breaks, and he's like, "There's still a little mini slime left." He's like, "Ha! I'll just eat you all, and I'll regain my power." And then Aqua comes up, and is like, "Oh fuck you!" <laughs> and right, all her followers... at this point, all her all her cultists are are backing her with all of their with, with all of their their faith and conviction, which they have a lot of. And they're yes. reciting the, the, the Aquan Creed, which is the most self-serving, <laughs> cowardly piece of shit creed I've ever heard. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and she yeah, channeled... She, and she goes, she, yeah. Go ahead, Gav. She goes in with the god blow that we've heard, we've seen so far, does absolutely nothing, which in this instance does a little bit, but not all that. But basically lets her keep him in place long enough with one fist while she charges up the fucking divine requiem. <laughs> <laughs> And at which point he realizes, oh my god, it's actually Aqua. Oh, I'm so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and poof, he's, ev- he's evaporated. Of course, you know, after all of this, Aqua is still running out of town because she purified the source of the springs. So it's just normal water. Yeah, right. It's no longer poisoned, but... um. But it's just water, yeah. which means she's effectively done the Devil King's job for him. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Um, <laughs> and that's basically where the series ends for now. I, I'm expecting there'll be another season at some point. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't heard anything yet. Well, it just I would the, want another season. The season just ended, Garrick. The season two just ended. Right. It just yeah. ended. Um... There is an OVA, but we didn't watch that. Right. It ended like a month or two ago. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it ended a couple. Yeah. I think a couple months ago. I think it ended in like winter. 
Or, or now, um, because you don't know have to say. Yeah. Now, because obviously we've skipped through a lot of this, and then we've we've literally just bounced from plot to plot, major plot to major plot, ignoring all the uh, the minor episodes. Um, you may think we're done, and we've got nothing else to say about this show. Oh no, we don't. <laughs> you, I will fight you guys wrong. to the death. <laughs> uh, the, oh, by the way, episode ten of season two was aired on March sixteenth. Really? Okay. Yep. Yeah. About two months ago, if that. Okay. So. And it- Sooner, more recently than I thought it did. Okay. Yep. So, um, oftentimes we talk about like our like our final thoughts on it, but there's a lot to talk about here. Um, all right, here's the thing. Um, I'll start this. Eric, you lo- you lo- Eric loves the show. Am I correct? Yes, I I really enjoy the show. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I w- and I'm somewhere in the middle. Right. <laughs> Uh, I will say this. Uh, I hated season one. Like, yeah. I really, I, really did not enjoy season one. That does not surprise me. It's not your type of humor at all. <sighs> we got to the end of season one, and because this was my suggestion, it was like, well, that's season one. We're done. We've, we've done shows before where we've done the first season and then left it there. And because I remembered we had a similar thought in regards to, um, was it Fate's Day? Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon. Oh, no, Fate Side 2. We did Black, both, no, no. both Fate Say and Black no, no, Lagoon we, were... No, no, no. no Fate Zero. Stay, Not that Stay Night bullshit. Fate Zero. Okay, Fate <laughs> Zero. We got to the end of Season 1, and we were all claiming, what the fuck bullshit? This is awful. What's going on? But we gave Season 2 a chance, and at the very least, it explained what it was doing. Well, we were also infuriated by where, bit... where Season 1 ended. Yeah. Yes, I honestly was not basis, aware it was split into two seasons. I had just watched the whole uh, fate. I just watched Fate Zero the like the whole way through, not realizing yeah. it was two seasons. And, and on that basis, I argued. I said we should have. I mean, Eric wanted to continue, but I could tell Peter had had enough of this already by episode like five. Um, but on that basis, as gone, we'll give. See, it, 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 there are only ten episode seasons. We'll give season two a go, and we'll at the very least see if it improves. So see, see, if, see if it finds its feet and actually realizes what it's trying to do. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm glad we gave it that chance. Yep. No, season, absolutely. Season two like is said, I like this show. Signi- season two is significantly better than one. Uh, that I'll agree. Yes. Um, okay. Now the one thing, the one problem, the one problem that tarnishes it with myself is, and I've said this to, the, to these two a few times, is the fact that this show, if you listen to the fans and the general consensus out there on the internet with all the reviews and everything else, this is the fucking second coming. This is the comedy version of Bebop. Bullshit. It, it is significantly overhyped. I, I will agree with that. All right. So, Eric's right. It's largely, season one is largely not my preferred style of humor. I've, there's, I've seen shows that do this style of humor that I actually do find funny. Um, and there are ep- individual moments in season one that I thought were fucking hilarious. Yes. A good chunk of them are yeah. visual gags. They, their timing on their visual gags are priceless. Um, almost everything, almost all the humor involving Megaman is great. Uh, I'm yes. actually looking forward to, to a dub with good comedic voice actors because I, I think there's a lot being lost in the subtitles there. It's possible. I don't know. Um... The problem, uh, so my problems with the show, um, for starters. Uh, <sighs> all right, so season one, uh, my problems with season one are okay. Cosmo is, is actually a, an interesting, complex comedic character. He's got a, he's got mm. actual depth to him. You know, he's sort of lazy and a bit of a coward and kind of a jerk, but at his root, he's a, basically a good guy. He wants he he generally you know he. Will in the at, when push comes to shove, he'll stick up for his friends and help people out. And you know he's fairly smart and he's lucky and he's a bit he's you know he's not he's cle- he's clever actually is the be- best way to describe him I'd say. Yes. Um, and you know, and Megumin is this wonderful, brilliant send up of Lena Inverse because she is the, yes. She is literally the everything Lena says is wrong with 
the ma the wizard who focuses only on the super powerful spell. If you don't know the little spells, you're useless. Megaman is there to point prove this point is completely true. I am convinced the people who wrote this show watched layers and listened to that speech of Lena's and said we will do the are, exact are you, opposite. To are are you the kidding? Point. Like there. There's so many references to everything in this series. <laughs> yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that specifically is, yeah, they are specifically, that is specifically a reference back to Slayers. Megaman is specifically a reference back to Lena. Um, and basically is the, the counterpoint to Lena's, Lena. In that, yeah, she knows the most powerful explosive spell, but nothing else. And Lena's point is, that's stupid. <laughs> and <laughs> Lena is completely correct. Yes. <laughs> Because, you know, Lena's actually really smart. Uh, but, uh, so, you know, Megaman, but despite that, she's endearing, funny, and likable. Because she's, you know, at yes. her heart, again, she's, again, she's, you know, devious, but at her heart, she's basically a good person. And, you know, she's, she genuinely, you know, be, and, and, you know, and I love her relationship with Cos her and Cosmo's relationship. They're best buddies. They're like brother and sister. It's great. Uh, and, you know, they, and she's got a lot of depth to her, which is immediately <clears throat> counterpointed by Darkness, who has all the depth of a sheet of paper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Darkness is Season the weakest character, yes. Season one Darkness is a one... I, 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 I hesitate to even say one note. There's barely a note there. It's just a joke. She's got yeah. She's got her masochism joke, and that she's she's got literally two dimensions: her masochism and the fact that she's that she is the nicest person in the group. And also, she's a klutz. So, but that's not a, like a personality trait. That's just a fact. Right. Yay. But I, it, it's, it's 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 as I said, the masochism thing wouldn't be too bad. If they gave her any kind of character in the first season, all the uh, and again, and it's also the number of times they use that joke. I uh, there was one episode where I counted, and halfway through they'd hit that joke six times. Yeah, I got really sick of that. Six yeah, well, times. You guys don't. Have somebody mentioned. <laughs> somebody mentioned. Yeah, somebody mentioned her. Uh, uh, you know getting hit or something and she'd go weak at the knees and cover a crotch and blush and it's like oh for fuck's sake really and I giggled every time I thought it was funny <laughs> in late in, in later seasons it becomes a bit more of a rather than her doing that over the top all the time it got to the point where they'd be halfway through a conversation and Kazuma would realize he goes oh, fuck, you're turned on right now aren't you she's like <laughs> no I'm no. not <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that so was a bit more and again, I'm, was... I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm specifically speaking about season one, darkness as an aside. But season one it is literally like I say, every every time. Imagine a conversation in anime, uh, you know, in a, in a normal series, and every time it comes around to to darkness's lines, she doesn't get lines. She reacts in that exact same way because of what was said previously. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. There's no development with her whatsoever. It's 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 a running gag that was that was a sort of it was it's amusing it was amusing at first and it it basically it's a, it's one of the, it's a running gag running gags tend to be go from you know, it's funny at first I'm sick of it I'm sick of it they keep doing it it becomes funny the problem is they went past the they kept doing it it's now funny to oh god fuck stop <laughs> give me a yeah. fucking break give me something else from her but that's nothing for me compared to Aqua in season one I. Hate that character in season one. Oh my god, there is she has no redeeming features for almost the entire season. She was so infuriating me to the point that I completely blanked out and missed any character development she might have had, which Eric's right, she had some. I just couldn't see it because of my blinding hatred for this character. Like they did yeah, such a job like... making me loathe her. And it's not like, you know, they were doing it because she's she's you know, petty and upset about her position and all the rest of it. It's, she's just an unlikable character. And er, er, Eric, you, Eric, she's not justified in. Here, here's the thing about about Aqua. She gets her comeuppance every time, and it's always funny. <laughs> Usually, I just, I, I, I didn't, I just, and, and I understand you, that 
There's a reason why you don't watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's exactly because of people like Aqua. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, the problem with It's Always Sunny is it's, a, it's a, literally a cast of Aquas. Yes. And, mm. and the thing is, I think It's Always Sunny is funnier. <laughs> because I think the writing is better. Well, it's always Sunny has also had like how many seasons to get. But like even together? from the outs- even from the outset, it was a- it's it's be- it's a be- it's better written comedy. My pro- my biggest problem with with season one of 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 Konosuba is it's an it's a comedy that isn't funny for me, and I, I get that for some people there's a- there's chunks of it that that is actually hilarious. And again, the visual gags are generally very good, and there's some good stuff with some of the characters. But overall, I just I found myself not laughing. I wasn't even reacting really. I was just like, oh. This is supposed to be funny, I guess. No, oh no, 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 Peter. Peter, you were definitely reacting, usually with a. <sighs> yeah, there were a few of that too. It was, it was, more, it was exasperating me. It wasn't making me angry or anything like that. I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> yeah. I, I, I was getting, I honestly was getting bored dur- during the show largely. I, I was not really enjoying it a- at all. Uh, that said, uh, as I said, the visual gags were good, and the animation was pretty good in season one. Right, uh, yeah. and the final and, episode and then, was good. I I was surprised by how much I enjoyed the last episode. Yeah, um, and I am very glad that I'm simultaneously glad and kind of infuriated that we watched the second season because it was so much better. They toned Aqua down a bit. She'd actually grown, and it became obvious she'd earned the growth. My problem with like her character development stuff in season one is it never seemed like she'd earned it to me. It just okay. seemed like it came out of mm-hmm. nowhere, and that bugged it, me. Didn't come out of nowhere, though. You were just blinded by your hatred for her. <laughs> I did say it seemed like it came out of nowhere, Eric. Okay. <laughs> um, just, um, just one of the things I want to say like... about the uh, that that I want to say about the the characters in is that particularly in season one, these are all pastiches of what people in like a, a JRPG would be like. Like yep. you have the the bland main character who can kind of do everything. That's Kazuma. It's being played by an asshole. You've got, how do you min max your stuff? The tank can't do anything but take a hit. That's darkness. Why would a tank do anything that can't take a hit? Because they're a giant fucking masochist. The, um, the red mage, just dump everything into their one nuke. That's all you need. Just dump it all in one nuke. And then Aqua is the irritating worst girl friggin' love interest that you're saddled with, who's the, the Sundari princess. And she just crank that to 11 and make her a priest. That that's your that's your generic JRPG party, right? You there. are not incor- you are not incorrect, Eric. And, and that's a lo- where a lot of the comedy comes from is the uh, comparisons between yeah, I could totally see this happening in like Final Fantasy IV or Chrono Trigger or something like that. Sure, <laughs> except in at least with Chrono Trigger, the characters are actually well written. Dude, I will fight you on this. <laughs> they are they are so much better written in Chrono Trigger. They have actual they, depth to their characters. To be fair, it's been a couple decades since I played Chrono Trigger. There's but no depth like in the first season of the show. In, se- in season one. Darkness, notwithstanding. She is paper thin. I will totally agree with that. But Mega Mean, even, even Aqua, like... Just uh, Ugh. and I understand why you don't like her. I like watching terrible people do terrible things and not learn from their mistakes. This is why I watch like watching <laughs> It's Always Sunny. This is what I find it funny. Yeah, <laughs> but there's wit and cleverness in It's Always Sunny. And there's no wit in this show, in the first season. It's just I... beating you over the head with the mallet of these people are terrible and they're getting their comeuppance. That's not no 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 because you have the the, the whole bit with um the. The, the OP um, friggin' main character from another anime that basically shows up. <laughs> and, and they're all like, no, we're not going to hang out with you. We like our terrible friends. They're, they're much they're better than you. <laughs> now, I, I will say, because he's going to sound... He's going to sound... Not snobbish or anything like that, but it's basically it's it almost comes across as like it's different styles of humor appealing to different kinds oh, of people. Absolutely, which, which that's it kind exactly of, it kind of is going on here. <laughs> but it's not to say that each one of us, in our own rights, are you know snobs in you know we don't say oh we only like this kind of humor. You know, one of us isn't all about toilet humor. The other one prefers highbrow. It's like we are all capable of laughing at the same shit. 
Oh yes. yeah, but, no, and I, again, like I there as I said, there's, there's, there's a I, reason why I never suggested this because I knew you'd hate it, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing like, is, I, I, knew I will... you wouldn't like it. It's like, I'll mention it because I think it's really funny, but I don't think he's going to dig it. <laughs> and I, again, this style of humor can work. And I've, I've said, I've seen it executed well before. I just didn't think it was executed well in season one. Here's the thing I think my, the style my... of humor doesn't change a lot in season two, it's just so much better executed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. season two is so much better in every way, except for the animation takes a notable, noticeable dive. It does. It's no, yeah, like I noticed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, those poor horses. Uh, uh, yeah, all oh, those poor horses. Um, partially because they dumped it all into the fight with Hans at the end. Oh my god, this, that fight is <laughs> like, gorgeous. Holy shit! That like, fight is gorgeous. <laughs> it's but great. I think my 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 issue with season one, especially though, is apart from like you say, the odd visual gag and all that kind of stuff. You remember what I said a couple of uh, weeks ago? I can't. I, I think it might have been uh, Bacano. Where we said, you know, that this show made me laugh more. Oh, sorry, that show made me laugh more than shows that are actively trying to make me laugh. Yeah. And sure. that was the problem with this. Konosuba is trying so hard to make you laugh. It's like sort of like Family Guy. It's, you know, it's hitting you in the face with the joke over and over and over and over and over and over. Saying, is it funny yet? Is it funny? Laugh now. And... In season two, they kind of dial it back a bit. They stop trying so hard. The jokes are the same. Um, well, they, they clearly well, become more comfortable with with, with the characters. In yeah, the they situation. do clearly. Yes, it's, you know, it's, it's, the, the writers definitely feel uh, get absolutely. much more of a, a better feel for what's going on. I, they're I, comfortable to throw a joke at, a sc- at the screen. If it sticks, great. If it doesn't, whatever. Move on. Yeah, and I, I, my, as is the part, the reason I'm sort of mildly infuriated by season two is, it's proof that these the writers of the show are capable of so much more than what they delivered in season one. Right. Yes. And honestly, if I'd been watching the show on my own without you guys, I would never have gotten to season two and never would have seen it because I would have right. I would have bailed mm-hmm. halfway through season one. I wouldn't have finished oh, the series oh, yes. in season one. Sorry, just to go back, what we mentioned about the season two animation drop back in the chat has picked up the one number one thing that we all saw. Those fucking horses. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, they were the worst animated anything I had ever seen in anything oh, ever. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh. I've, I've watched Last Fleet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I, I said I've seen. I know. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I was thinking about trying, agreeing with you. Then I thought, wait, no, I've watched Last Fleet. <laughs> no, no. Twelve Hounds Mouse exists. Yeah, so, yeah. This, this, <laughs> this, this the, the the second season. It's not horrible, but there are one or two things, and there's a, there's an epi- there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, an episode where they basically join when they go off to the spring, the hot spring city. They they basically go by horse drawn caravan, right? And oh, the those are some. I, I think. I think I likened it to one of those old toys that you can you used to be able to buy, where you know the the carriage is the toy, and that's the bit that's on the floor. Right. And as you roll it and the wheels turn, the, the horse's legs that are basically hanging in midair, like, flap around. That's, it was, that, it was that's a lot like that, yeah. Like. It, yeah. Oh. To be fair, they do make a joke out of that when they have it do a drifting turn. Yes. Do a bootlegger turn, which is hilarious. <laughs> that they was funny. They power slide a horse drawn carriage. <laughs> they know how to do visual gags. They really do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not fault their visual their their ability to do visual humor. They're really good at it. They're really good yes. at visual humor. I I don't think there was I, I I think I think I can think of very few visual gags I didn't that were actually like like that weren't like fan service based. And there were a few of the fan service based ones that were fucking hilarious too. Yes. Yeah. Uh but like all the action based you know uh visual gags were perfect. They were great. The timing on them was great. And it's. I think that it's. It. Uh, uh, there's so much. There's a lot about the show I really do like, but there's enough about it that makes me. Uh, that just. I mean, season. As I said, season one just infuriated me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and no, I understand that you don't like it, and that's cool. Like, like I said, there's a reason why I never suggested this. Yep, I know. <laughs> and as I said, it's. I. It's. If it was. If it was doing this, it's. It's. 
it's a style of humor I don't like, and it's not. But I like I don't generally like. I should say because as I said, right there, I've seen this style of humor done well, and season two did it. It's just that I don't don't think they executed it to the best of their ability. And um, I think I think it was just a, a high learning curve for the the writing staff. Honestly, well, th- uh, yes. Uh, before I forget to say this, there's one other important point about this. Comedy is fucking hard. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So Comedy's I'm really hard. I'm forgiving of this. Like I'm not like it's it's not the worst show ever. I will I'm not going to say like you shouldn't watch this because the fu- because it's not funny. Because clearly Eric loves it and thinks it's hilarious. So It you is. Know, and if it's the, your style of humor, go for it because you're going to love it. If it's not your style of humor, season 1 is going to be hard to get through. But it's worth it for season 2, I think. Yes. I think. No, it I'm, it's it, totally it, worth it for season two because season one is good. Fight me. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm not going to fight you because <laughs> it's not worth fighting you because we so vehemently disagree. There's no, there's not. It's like aliens uh, is superior to Jaws. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that argument. At any rate, yes, uh, Eric. Uh, as is often the case, Eric and I disagree. Actually, here's the thing that I'm not sure if people have picked up on. Eric and I disagree on a lot of stuff. Uh, we we there's a lot of stuff we actually there's a lot of things that Eric and I don't agree on. Things we like just stylistically, yes. like from music. Like you know, I I happen to there's like there's a lot of music I like that Eric, Eric hates and vice versa. Yes. Um. There's a lot of movies that Eric hate. Eric loves that I hate and vice versa. Television, yes. same thing. Comic books, same thing. Um. There's also a lot of overlap of things we both love. A lot of the time, in that case, we love them for different reasons. Uh, yes, entirely different reasons. <laughs> so I'd like to to point out, internet, that you know, out there in the internet world, it is possible to get on with someone who doesn't agree with you. <laughs> no, no, Peter's my worst enemy. Are you kidding? We're, we're, we're constantly <laughs> plotting against one another this entire time. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we are. I mean, we. we, we... <laughs> I don't think I have any friends I'm not plotting against all the time. I mean, come on. It's part of a good friendship. <laughs> I mean, how many times have you have you how many times have you stayed off the ninjas I've sent to kill you? Like a dozen? Yeah. I know you've sent more, they're just not very good. <laughs> you know, I've got I've got limited funding, man. <laughs> and how many hell moments have you stepped over that I've opened? <laughs> um quite a few. But I had to pay, I had to paper mache over two or three though. Yeah, it's tough to open a big one. Yeah, I know. It's kind of annoying. It's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, though, so seriously. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is one of those... Sh- it's... it's uh, long this story is a divisive short. Show it's a divisive show, and, yeah. And honestly. for all of my, my shouting fight me, it's all in good fun. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the other, the other, the other, the only other part of this we haven't really touched on that we kind of agreed on as well was the fact that this isn't your typical anime. So as we've already said, the there is an overarching plot, but that is secondary. That's one of those things that I'm pretty sure they're planning on getting to eventually, if they even get that far with the anime. This is a sitcom. Yeah, pure yeah. and simple. It is reset to zero at the start of every episode. You know, at the end of every episode, go again. Kinda. There, there, there's there, a, there, there is there's stuff a little that bit goes of on. There, there, there's some progression, but like, but it, again, it's sitcom level progression. Yeah. Yes. So you know, this isn't a, a an overarching plot, which is why we didn't bother. We 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 spoken about the overall major plots, which literally what we've talked about probably covered maybe five or six episodes out of the twenty. The arc with the with the hot springs town. Is like four yep. or five episodes actually. Yeah, and it's, it's hilarious, the, yeah. and it's 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 really good. It's the second best thing in the show. That's in my that. Opinion. It's less than that. I'm sure. No, it's the, it's at least four go, episodes. The going to the hot springs might make it that long, but the actual in the hot springs town. But that, is only that's about two that's episodes. all. That's all one yeah. story though, Gav. It's an actual story. Well, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's four episodes. They, it's, uh, episode seven, season two is when they start out to, to the place, and the it's it's the last four episodes. Yeah, but it you know it's that's one story. Their tri- their trip to the city and dealing with the plot, what happens there, is all one story. Yep. And 
I will be honest, it floored me that they actually had that long a consistent story within the series. Because it was it, because yeah. it's a sitcom. And it was well executed, and it, 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 it's, it didn't now say it's welcome either. It, yeah, it, it lasted exactly just long enough. But yeah, they like season two. I'll put it this way: season two had an ep- had several episodes where three episodes specifically, basically, that were fo- heavily focused on Cosma and one of the, one of the girls. Yep. So there was the Cosma and Megumin episode. There was a Cosma and Aqua episode. There was a Cosma and Darkness episode. The amazing thing is that I enjoyed all three of those episodes. Yes. Despite the fact that two of them yes. are involved characters, I'm not a big fan of. To be fair, the the Aqua arc, not the 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 Darkness arc, gives her all of the character development she was missing in the first one. Yes, Dark, Yeah, the big thing is that yes. Darkness Darkness becomes an actual character in season two. She gets yes. actual depth. We understand her motivations, um, and we get to see personality from her beyond her masochistic tendencies. And we get a little bit of that at the, towards the end of we, season we just... one, also a little bit. Yeah, which is odd because, as I mentioned as well, the the episode where they actually do do that, the 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 one we see her background and it's her and Kazuma, they they actually do wind that that joke up to eleven. They go all yes. out with that joke, but because they, it's been worked far far more cleverly, <clears throat> and it's like, like I said, it's the joke of the whole episode. It's not slapping you in the face every five seconds when it's not appropriate. Just because, look, look, it's her. She's masochist. Look, she's she's squirming. Look, look, laugh, laugh, laugh. Because they don't do that like they did through season one, and it's it's actually the the point of the episode. It's funny. Yes. <laughs> Again, the writing is just better in season two. It just that's yes. all there is to it. Just I, better, yeah. And whether you, it, it 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 doesn't matter whether you like season one or not. Season two. Yeah, is- and I will agree. There, there's a noticeable step up in. in the quality of pretty much everything but the animation in 2. Yep. They, they they trade in the animation quality for it in season 2. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the animation's not terrible, but it's it's me. Yeah, the, the animation's not like claw out my eyes and turn myself over to Cthulhu bad, but... You know, we're, yeah, it's, you know... It's not. It's not twelve no ounce mouse bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it, it's not even The like... animation's actually pretty... <laughs> season 2 has a noticeable drop, but it's nothing terrible at all. It's it is agree. perfectly it, serviceable. It's yeah, it goes from good to serviceable. Yeah. Um yeah, I too great in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess, you know, I uh, Yeah, there are a bunch of other side characters we haven't mentioned. Uh well, not a bunch. There are a couple other side characters we haven't mentioned and I mean like there's uh, Megumin has a rival that she grew up with, uh, Union they both yep. went to the same school. They're both art. They're both archmages. They both specialize. In, they both know our explosion magic. Uh, they're rivals. Uh, <laughs> they're kind of each other's only friends. <laughs> yeah, they, they're li- they, yeah. Well, you know, Megaman now has you know the, her party and right. And like they like they con- like she, her union constantly ch- challenges to, to you know, uh, you know, challenges, challenges uh... of various sorts, and you know. Megaman just wins all the time because she's, you know, far more clever than Union. She's, yeah, she's a lot brighter. <laughs> when, we, when we say challenges, it's like this could be absolutely anything. anything. Like we, we, yeah, we see, we see one bit where it's like where, where Megaman's like, oh, okay, fine, we haven't done anything for a while. Everyone else goes in, and you see them like it pan, there's a panning shot where it just passes um, Union and Megaman in the courtyard playing rock paper rock, scissors. Paper, scissors, right. As it pans up into the upper window where everyone else is. Yep. And it's just any little, little random thing they can, you know, that, that she can challenge her at. But yeah, they they actually this this little sort of flash like they flash back to their like their their childs before they met even and like Union yeah. is this you know she's from a rich family but she's alone all the time she has no friends her family's never there she's like making pretend friends and so when she meets Megumin who's also an outcast. Right, you know, she latches onto her, and you know, Megumin is grew up like you know, basically an orphan with a little sister, and like is like scrounging for food, you know, to you know, right, eating moldy bread crusts, <laughs> and you know, like in, in like you know, you know, fishing for her and her little sister. It's like they've got both these have these very sad backstories, and you know, I, I you... which is told in a fairly comedic way, honestly. Yes, oh, it, it's it's <laughs> you're sitting there laughing at this while you're thinking that's actually really sad. <laughs> But it's funny, but it's really sad. 
and that that's the sort of thing that I, I I really that like that was brilliant, and I enjoyed that, and I really really like I I love stuff like that, and I really wish there was more stuff like that. I wish there was stuff like that at all in season one. <laughs> um, the other my other other complaint about season one I do want to make, and it is, uh, is about Wiz, and I like Wiz as a character. She's fun. We're introduced to her after the party met her because they basically, as I, as I mentioned, we were going along the the, the 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 adventure where they ran into Wiz and met her happens off screen. They they, had, they throw a few like screenshots basically of of the encounter yeah, and that's there's it. There's a few seconds here and there of them like fighting Wiz basically. And I it it I have just got this it it had that feeling of I really wish I'd seen that because I think that would have been I think that it would have ended up being funny and fun and interesting and would have you know given us more background to Wiz, which would have, which, as much as I enjoy Wiz, she kind of needs. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little, a little annoyed that that was one of the things that they actually, like, they didn't include that, which I think would have been good, and they had a couple of episodes that I thought were kind of pointless. Mm. But, you know, that's a minor quibble, honestly. <laughs> At any rate, um... I guess we should go into final thoughts. I mean, I mean, we could go in circles about how much we like or dislike it. I guess we should sort of fun, sum it, fun, finish it up. Um, right. I, I'll, I'll start. What, 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 sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. There is one thing I've there is one thing I've noticed while I've been reading the wiki here that uh, that, that kind of surprised me, and I'd have to go back and watch this individual episode. And this is a sort of this is the sort of praise that I was referring to. So during a review of the first few episodes, Anime News Network praised the anime adaptation for its comedy, calling the second episode the funniest episode of anime I have ever seen. Uh, what was the second episode again? That's the uh, one where they... That's the one where they, they recruit, recruit uh, Mega Man in Darkness. That's when they recruit Mega Man in Darkness and purchase them at the end. Right, yeah. right, right. It was funny. I Okay, I, I liked it. it. That was funny, but, like, I, I've laughed harder at other... Yeah... I mean, I... it's this is, the funniest it's episode of that season up to that point. It's the funniest episode. I think it might be the funniest episode of that season. Looking at it. Yeah. But, you know. Oh, okay. Sorry. The actual quote is the funniest episode of anime in recent. Um... Basically, it's not the funniest episode ever. It's in you know in of, of recent shows, basically. Which, okay, okay. That, that I, I could. That be, I, could yeah. I could believe that, possibly. Although I will say I think I laughed more during one or two episodes, during at least one episode of, of Bacano, and I know I laughed more mm. during several episodes of Kill a Kill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kill a Kill's yeah. old at this point. Kill a Kill's like three or four years old. Yeah, that's still sort of semi-recent, though. All right. It, it's a, at any rate irrelevant. Um, yeah, irrelevant. So I, we should probably get into the final thoughts, though. Um, I'll st- I think well, I'll start. Eric, I'll start. Um, then Eric. Then get, since it's Gav's recommendation choice, it's Gav, Gav gets gets the hammer, as it was it were. <laughs> um, yes, a curling <laughs> reference. Uh, uh, so uh, my final thoughts on the show is it, I I find the show very frustrating <laughs> because I really really didn't like season one and I liked season two and. I curse season one for being what it is, given how good season, how much, how much I actually did enjoy season two, because it's proof that the people who wrote the show could do better. And I really didn't enjoy season one. Um, as I, uh, and they, while while you know they do improve all the characters in season two, I still find Aqua kind of infuriating at times, which is the point I know, but <laughs> I was going to uh. say. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, uh, as to whether I would recommend the show, because I like you know I I could go on. You've you, I, we've I I've talked at length about my thoughts on it. So, but as to whether I recommend it, um, if you like it's always sunny in Philadelphia at all, uh, you will probably like the show. Uh, style in terms of that's the style of humor you enjoy, and you like anime and you like fantasy. I think you'll find the show funny, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't. Um, if you're not sure if the style of humor will be for you, check it out, let it ride for a few episodes. If it really pisses you off, 
I can understand di- ditching it at that point. But I do. I think it might be worth going through the first season and getting to season two to see. It's, since it's short, I think it's, it might be worth it. Um, I'm as I said, I'm glad we got there, got to season two because I did. I did find myself enjoying the show a lot more in season two, especially after. I, I especially starting with episode two of season two, uh, which I. Hmm. I think it was probably my favorite episode of the series. Um, it had nothing. It has nothing to do with the fact that you know Cosmo and and, and Mega Man are by and far the two best characters in the show. Uh, they oh, really no, are. It, it, it literally is because of that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I I was I, I found myself exasperated and kind of bored during season one, but season two, uh, season two really pulled the show out of the, out of the fire for me. Um, so. Take that as you will, uh, Eric. Okay, I actively uh, uh, like both seasons and, and found it frankly hilarious. Um, less funny the second time around with season one. Um, I also had um, I'm not sure it's good for binging, particularly season one. I, I think giving them a few days or even a week between them is really the way to, to watch season one. Um, because, well, as everyone complained about jokes getting stale, they don't have a chance to get stale if you have time between them. Um, but season two is clearly like a, a step up for the, 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 the writing staff. Like, they really pull their shit together. And, and not that their shit wasn't together, fight me. <laughs> uh, but they really knock out of the park in season two. And yeah, I really just a or friggin' some of these characters. Like, even Aqua is great, if only because I find it so hilarious when she eats shit, which is all the time, because she deserves it. <laughs> Not often enough. <laughs> but, yeah, clearly Megamine and Cosmo are the best characters, <clears throat> because, frankly, they're the ones that I think the writers like the best, and certainly the ones that animators like the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And yeah, I the show is funny. Take it, take it or leave it. Um, I wouldn't binge season one, but yeah, I I dig it. There's not a lot much else to say. I found it hilarious. Your results may vary. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only the only Literally. the only con- the only contention I'd have there, Eric, is you said that obviously if you don't watch an episode, uh. You know, episode by episode, binge. if you don't binge, basically, a joke can't get stale. Oh, but when it can get stale. It's just it when does... it's six, seven, eight times an episode, it's still funny. It... <laughs> <laughs> it's look, for for me. Look, I didn't have quite a, a, an adverse reaction as 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 Peter, but with myself. If I don't like something, it's it, it'll actually leave a bad taste in my mouth, and it's like I won't want to. I physically won't want to watch it. Um, this was just kind of okay. It's there. It wasn't, you know. It had it had the occasional bit that made me laugh. Um, mostly the the sight gags. Um, Aqua. <laughs> Okay, I know what she's there. She's there to be the spoiled brat that gets put in a place, and uh, that, and, and, I, and I, I, I lost all interest in her. I didn't want to watch any stories with her or anything like that. I didn't care. I was like, okay, she's there. I'll deal with it. My problem was darkness. Was just that overuse of that joke, mm. over and over and over and over, and it, 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 it's like I've said, it, it's. It took you out of the fact that she's a character. She she wasn't. She didn't have any real lines or progression or development other than setting up that punchline every single time. And it wasn't until season two she actually became a person. Um. So yeah, I mean, season two is good. Season two is a very good season, but. The problem with it is, is you are you've already been put in that pit by season one, from my point of view at least, where it's like, eh, whatever. God, they're doing that joke again. Okay, that was kind of funny, I suppose. And then season two kicks in, and you're like, oh, okay, so they actually were capable of, they just couldn't be asked. I I'll disagree with that. I think they 
were working up to being that capable. I think it was a, a case of, of learning how to work the character. Maybe. I can, I can give, this is the thing, I can give them a lot of leeway. I can give them benefit of the doubt because I've tried to write. It's fucking hard. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's one of those things. But it's like I said, it's just, it's the lazy, like I said, the, the overuse of that one joke that really just, this is this is my problem. If I get one, if I get stuck on one thing, it's a, it's a pit bull with a bone. You know what I mean? It's like that's just stuck on me. That overuse over and over. And I was, I got to the point I was counting every time they used it, and then mm. they proved me wrong because in in season two, like I've said, they built an entire episode around that premise, but made it funny because they actually thought about what they were doing. She she was such a throw. Darkness was such a throwaway character in the first season. You could have replaced her with a really big fucking shield. Well, I don't well, know about that. There are some funny bits in there with her. But but overall... Like the results may vary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Overall, I'm not saying don't watch this. I am saying if you uh, haven't seen this yet and you're going into it, don't believe the hype. Make your own opinion. This is not the second coming. Yeah. Oh. But... You know, it, it, go go in uh, with an with an expectation of a, 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 it's competent. It's a competent anime at the very best, at the very least. Um, but it takes until season two to get into its into its stride. Yeah, it definitely takes a season to get into its stride. Yeah, I thought that I, we don't love shows that have to do that. Looking at you, TNG. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love Next Gen. For season one of Next Gen was um, had it had issues. It <clears throat> had it had probably a few, two or three of the worst episodes of Star, of Star Trek of all time, and that's you know, yeah, that's yeah. including Voyager and Enterprise. Yeah, mm. <laughs> still prefer first season of TNG to the first season of, of this show. <laughs> well, that's because they had spaceships in that one, Peter. That's actually a fair point, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I admit I do prefer sci-fi to fantasy, so that that that's a point in its favor. Um, at any rate, I think that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Uh, uh, we clearly disagree on it to varying degrees. I think all of us agreed that season two is good, though. So yes, um, yeah, show is awesome. Fight me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you keep using that joke over and over. <laughs> to illustrate the point that it's still funny. <laughs> oh, at any rate, um, thank you everybody for listening. We hope you had fun. Uh, next time, we're, it's my choice this time, um, and I we're doing another comedic series uh, because apparently we're in a comedic series, uh, you know, rotation. Uh, I'll fix and, that. Yeah, yeah, Eric's gonna fix that afterwards, probably. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna be doing Devil is a Part Timer. Uh, because I decided that before we watched the show, so I uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I've watched I watched the show and thought it was unbelievably hilarious, and uh, it should be watched. <laughs> uh, I really well, like Devil's a Part Timer, unsurprisingly. So yeah, it, I've seen it. It's it's good. Well, just to make make a quick mention as well, since I asked started asking for suggestions. Um, we've managed to do three of them and I've only chosen one of them. So um, keep those suggestions coming because these guys keep nicking them. I, really, <laughs> it, I didn't nick them. I had both the, I had both of those chosen of like a year ago. I know, I know. Pete, okay, sorry. I'll let, I'll let Eric off the hook. Peter keeps nicking them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What was the one that I suggested that we can't? You didn't. It was me. Both you of them. You didn't. Okay. It, it was, was both Bacchino Bacchino and, Bacchino, uh, and now Bacchino Devil's a part-timer. Okay. So, They're both uh, on the list. Yeah, and I keep, just, I... Keep, keep the suggestions coming in. I've actually got a couple on the list already um, that other people have um, mentioned to me. Um, Diwani, that's on the list. Um, there's also a couple of those real friends in real life. Uh, hello, if you're listening. Uh, they've suggested to me, I've already told these guys what that is, and that's going to be a weird one if we ever do that one. But, um, <laughs> oh, Lordy. But what is this? Yeah, keep the... Keep those suggestions coming, please. All right. Anyways, thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.